Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're starting on a new project. Here it is. It's a 1985 Yamaha Tri-Z250. I got this as a trade for doing some work for someone else. But as you can see, it is not in very good shape. Now it did come with the wheel on this side. I've got it off and I'm already starting to work on it. Um, the wheel that was on the other side was uh, from a go-kart, I believe. And it was the wrong bolt pattern and it bent one of the lug studs. So I got new studs for the other side. I'll fix that. Uh, as you can see, these fenders are shot. This is from sitting in the sun and getting sandblasted out here in El Paso and everything just... Th this front tire is uh, completely dry rotted, cracked. I uh, don't know if it's the original or not, but it doesn't matter. It's junk and it needs to get replaced. Uh, the carburetor is hanging off of it. That's going to have to be taken apart, cleaned up, rebuilt. Uh, that's pretty much the extent of it. Okay, as you can see here, this is one of the wheels that I've got now. This is a wheel off of a 200 blaster. They're steel. A lot easier to find. They're the same size as the original rears for the, the uh, Tri-Z, except the Tri-Z are aluminum. Outrageously expensive these I could get I got this one for this is replaced the one that was the wrong side wrong style um, I think I got it for 30 or 35 bucks it was yellow and had some weird paint on top of that uh, I stripped it down and I'm gonna make it gold so we'll come back when we're done all right this is what I'm using to paint the wheels with. Turn this so I can. It's Krylon metallic gold leaf. And when you spray it, it's, it's kind of like, um, the best I can say is it's kind of like a, a, a metal flake in a semi-clear or maybe a, a metal flake in a candy color or something it, it's kind of weird how it goes on but I'll show you what it looks like on the wheel alright this is what it looks like on the wheel this is just the base coat I still gotta clear coat it because this stuff is not really meant for the outside elements so I uh, put a couple coats of primer on it and then a couple of coats of this gold. So, up for fly. So that's what it looks like now. We'll come back once we get the clear on it. All right, all right. Here's our finished product. Fully painted, sealed with clear coat. Valve stem installed. Now, all we gotta do is put a tire on it. All right, here we are the next day. I got both wheels painted and the tires mounted. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, this gold doesn't necessarily match the, uh, the gold anodized aluminum front wheel, but, uh, it don't look too shabby. As for the tires, I put uh, Chevron pattern. These are Carlisle AT101 tires. I think uh, in this area where we got a lot of sand, softer stuff, uh, they'll do really well. And our harder pack stuff, I don't think they'll do that good, but I think they'll do okay. 
but in the softer sand I think they'll do all right but that's what I got going on now uh, I think the next thing we're gonna do is maybe start on getting the carburetor loose and some other stuff out of the way and we'll come back to that a little bit so now what I want to do is I'm going to take these fenders off because they're just going to be in the way and they're pretty pretty rough so just get them out of the way uh, the, the carburetor is not even connected to the engine it's just kind of hanging out here so I'm going to take this off uh, take it apart it's pretty nasty on the inside too um, gosh yeah it's just it's pretty bad so it's a it's a Makuni but I'm going to take this off take it apart clean it up and then uh, from there I'm going to take the the reed cage off um, there's more clean up in here too we take the reed cage off um, see what's in there see if the reed, the reeds need to be uh, replaced or not um, the air box wasn't even attached um, so I'm just gonna go through all these things and uh, see what needs to be replaced uh, what can be reused um, and there's some pieces missing that I probably won't be able to find so uh, we'll go back, uh, we'll come back in a little bit once I, well, we'll just take this off right now. Oh, there we go. That's the choker or enricher circuit. That's pretty dirty, but it's not too bad. It's not, not all worn out or anything. It's just dirty. So I'll start tearing into this and see what we come up with. Okay, so it's been a few days and I had the carburetor sitting in chem dip to try to clean it out. But unfortunately, the, uh, the carburetor is actually in pretty bad shape and it's, it's not really it's not rebuildable. Um, there's pieces that should have come out that are stuck. I can't get the idle jet out, and uh, with you know the pilot jet or the uh, the idle circuit is uh, the smallest circuit in the carburetor, and, and you really need to have good access with the cleaners to those places so they'll come clean. Otherwise, they'll just be clogged up forever. So that carburetor, as is, will probably never could never make this bike run right so I looked around to see if I could find something else as a replacement and the the Tri-Z is actually quite tame for a 250 uh, sport quad uh, especially a two-stroke um, in comparison to like a, a an ATC 250R or uh, uh, the Kawasaki Takati 3 or even some of the four-wheelers like the, the quad racers and stuff from Suzuki. Um, this is, uh, uh, it's quite tame. So the carburetor was only a 32 millimeter carburetor. And the closest thing that I could find that I felt comfortable trying um, to replace it with was a CR125 carburetor and uh, the reason I picked that one is it's a 34 millimeter instead of a 32 so it'd be a little bit bigger but not too big and it would still be able to be mounted inside the, the uh, intake boot so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna replace it this carburetor is a round slide as you can see here this thing is round uh, the CR125 is called an oval slide it's basically two flat piece, flat sides and an, a rounded end on both sides, on both ends of it. So uh, that might actually help a little bit with performance once we get the jetting right on it. 
because it's not going to be jetted right out of, you know, perfect out of the box, so I'm going to have to play with that. But uh, while I'm at it, I want to go ahead and take this intake boot off and look at our, uh, our reed cage and our reed. take itself the tube or the spigot mount whatever the cart mount that looks like it's in pretty good shape these reeds don't look too bad either um, I might still go ahead and replace these reeds with uh, something aftermarket I'll look around and see but uh, they don't seem to be too bad. And yep, they seem like they're properly tensioned and everything because you have the lighter ones on the top and the heavier ones on the bottom to help with the, uh, the low speed throttle application and the high speed. So it seems to be pretty good, but I think I might still, since we're going with a bigger carburetor, I might go with a better set of reeds too. So. Um, I have to order parts and it'll be a while getting them here in the meantime I'll probably try to start trying to fix the gas tank and we're missing uh, a Kickstarter and I gotta figure out uh, if I can find something that will replace the original because uh, finding an original one while I probably can find it I probably couldn't afford it because they're they're just so darn expensive so I might just make something that works. I don't know yet. But uh, I'm going to call this the end of this video. Uh, I know this is kind of a short one and I didn't do a whole lot in it. But please give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Comment, share, subscribe if you haven't. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers right now and I'm just under 600. Um, I've also started a Patreon account, so if you want to support me in, in that way, please become a patron of the, of the channel, and uh, it would help out tremendously. I do appreciate it, and uh, I'll get everything ready for the next video on this, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, everyone.